Dan, you got any secret sauce? Anything under the hood that we should know about? I think for me, the, the secret sauce would be about uh, simplicity. I think, uh, you know, today we've got, we live in the technology age. We've got every, every technological advantage at our fingertips, and those things are pretty remarkable. Uh, but for me, you know, I learned a long time ago I was very interested in equipment and, you know, I had all different kind of camera systems and I would go into the field and I find myself kind of like searching, okay, what am I doing? What am I reaching for? And now when I go into the field, a lot of the time that I'm working, I have a single camera and a single lens. And a lot of people will say, yeah, but don't you find that really restricting? And in fact, it's the complete opposite for me. It's very, very liberating because I don't have to think about any of that. All I'm doing is watching and waiting and looking while I'm in the field. And I'm just waiting for those moments. I'm waiting for my right, the right light. And when it comes to equipment, I don't have to think about anything. It's just focused on, on those moments in the composition. And it, it is, it's actually a, a tremendous relief to be in the field and work that way. What I do before projects is very similar in the sense that develop the idea, developing the idea of what the project is is a critical part. Like, mm -hmm. what's the project? What's the story? How am I best going to tell that, which is going to dictate which format or, you know, if I'm shooting digital or, or film or square or black and white. And uh, I do my research. So I think that's one thing that gets a little bit lost these days is when you do documentary work, a lot of times, you know, you can go and just wing it. You yeah. can go somewhere and, and shoot and that's a lot of fun. But if you have a specific theme in mind or a specific story that you're going to tell, I think in some cases it's better to do some research up front, which can really maximize the potential you have when you're in the field, especially if you have limited time. So I'll do my research. I'm always taking the same cameras with me for the most part, mm -hmm. and uh, I try to keep it simple. The light is the primary dictating factor for me. Um, and composition, because I use the 35 and even with the 50, is I'm always looking for a foreground, a midground, and a background because I want that lens to build depth in a 35 millimeter image. I don't want a one-dimensional flat photo. I want something close something in the middle and something in the background that are all related and the light working on those three planes. And when you get that, it just gives you a sense of, of three dimension on a, on a one dimensional photograph. That's really the key for me. Your work is, it looked like all black and white. Do you shoot color at all? Or just uh, I do. I shoot color. Uh, depends. It's all project specific. Okay. Uh, most of the time, I started my photography career as a color photographer, which was a little bit backwards of most of the, I went to photojournalism school. And we all learned to process and print black and white first, but I immediately departed from black and white and started shooting color because I realized if I wanted to graduate and be a magazine photographer, I better know how to shoot color. Yeah. So I sort of lived a reverse life and I didn't find black and white until about 12 years after becoming a photographer. And I one day went out and shot black and white and I said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's primarily what I do now. Different photographers are driven by different things to make work. You know, some people are driven by publication or notoriety or whatever. And I think for everybody, there's always a little piece of that involved. But for me, the experience of making the photo, of actually physically being in the field, is where, to me, the mojo comes from. That is why I do it. It's like uh, I was telling somebody a couple days ago, it's like di living a different life. You know, you have, I have my work life and my home life and my professional life. And then I have the life of what it's like to be a photographer doing documentary work in the field. And it literally, it's like opening a, a door, so many different doors into worlds and places that I would other, otherwise never be without the camera. Uh, and in terms of the image, it depends. I mean, I've seen, I've, I think I've made images where it's 100% driven by the content. You know, I can think of an image uh, I shot for a newspaper years ago of, uh, of a police type scene happening on the street. The light was bad, my exposure wasn't great, it didn't matter, it ran like six columns in the paper because it was 100% driven by just dramatic content. Um, and then in other times it's a combination of very subtle factors. It's a feeling that you're, you're, you're forcing the viewer to experience by looking. It could be very subtle, subtle light, subtle composition, uh, different, even just tonal reins in the, in the gray tones can, um, can elicit a response from somebody. So that's the beauty of photography. And, and with each viewer, you know, the image that, that is a, a subtle image might be very impactful to you, and the next person that looks at it has very little emotion, you know, and that's the beauty of it. For being a creative industry, I think that there's an unbelievable amount of conformity within not just the photography world, but the art world in general. Something becomes popular it finds success and suddenly there are tens of thousands of people trying to emulate that's whatever whatever you know thing it was and in essence the only thing that matters is what's inside of you and what you're trying to say in the way that you want to say it and i think 
what I would uh, be aware of is people that tell you you have to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a photographer today, you have to do A, B, C, and D. I don't believe that at all. I think the only thing that you have to do is what's that driving force inside of you that's saying, you know what, I should be doing, you know, I should be doing that and that's what I want.